Bibles. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the incorruptible Word of God, and it will change me according to the revelation I allow it to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many here have made a mistake? <laughs> After you've made your mistake, how many here never did that mistake again? Only one? Oh my goodness. Let me ask you this question. When you made the mistake, on purpose, would you do it again? No, right? No. There are many, 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 many people in the Bibles that actually messed up, wrecked up. They definitely weren't perfect. And uh, I believe that if we can look at them and learn the mistakes that they did, that we could not do the same mistakes. What do you think? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because you're very valuable and you're very important, not only to God, but you're very important in this body of Christians. Whatever you have been talking about coming out of your mouth in the last two weeks, whatever you've been watching or seeing in the last two weeks will determine my message of God, is he an option in your life? Because if you talk about and you watch something that has no relationship to God at all, then your relationship with God is like Pastor Sveta says, it becomes an option. Because you will actually, literally, that's the title of my message, is God an option to you? Well, no, Pastor. I love God with all my heart. But let me, let me share this. Um, we're, to, we're to model ourselves after Jesus Christ. But many people are taught this, that Jesus is way up here someplace, and we're way down here. And we're not worthy, we're not... Um, you know, we're, we're way lower class than Jesus Christ. But the interesting thing is, says in the Bible that when you get born again, he comes and lives and abides on the inside of us. So why would we consider ourselves a second class? Can I get an amen? amen. You know, he has provided so much for us and he has in store so much for us that we need to know um, some things, because he's literally told me that this message is very pertinent for you to receive all that he has for you. Um, he's preparing you so that you can receive it. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 to 11. I I'm going to read it because there's things in here I want to point out. And um, I want to make sure that, um, that we, we understand where I'm going here. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 to 11. There, I'm reading now the New American Standard. It says, Therefore, my holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider Jesus. Okay, guys, we need to consider Jesus, all right? Consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession. Is he, see, what you have been talking about in the last two weeks, is he your confession or is he not on your lips? Am I giving him glory? Am I giving him honor? And when I meet people, or am I talking about, you know what, my motorcycle won't start. It's got a dead battery. You know what, I got to go. Da, da, da. What, what, is my, what is coming out of my mouth? Is he my confession? I like the very next three words. He was faithful. No matter how unfaithful we are, he's faithful. We need to learn to be more faithful. Not only to him, but to one another. To love one another. To be faithful to one another. Who appointed him, as Moses also was in his house. 
Then I'm going to skip down. Uh, for every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. I, I should have put my um, verses in here so I knew exactly where I was. Now Moses, it says, now Moses, next verse, now Moses, yes. Now Moses was the most unfaithful guy you'd ever want to meet. See, Moses was faithful. As a son over his house, whose house we are. If we hold fast our confession and the boast of our hope firm until the end. We need to be faithful. We need to be speaking and saying things. We need to be writing out petitions of prayer, of declaring where we're going, what, what we're doing. We need to be faithful within the house. Amen? Faithful with helping one another. Hold fast our confidence and the boast of our hope until firm until the end. Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says. So here, I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit's saying something to you today. Okay, everybody, say today. today. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. See, we're, we're not to harden our hearts. That's what Pastor Sveta was talking about. What happens is a person gets their hearts hardened and they, and you know what, I, I mean, we've actually had some people um, in the last little while have left. And one of them uh, uh, said to me in a text message is, hey, Doug, the moment I read, hey, Doug, I knew you're trying to relate to me as your friend. And I'm not your friend. I'm your pastor. First, I'm your pastor, and as we work on, I can become your friend. Never, ever assume I'm your friend, but I'm not your pastor. If I'm not your pastor, then we have a situation. I heard that message by Pastor Ileana in California. She says, I want to let you women know. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You're not my friend. I'm your pastor. Get that through your head. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Even to her relatives, yeah. She has a lot, they have a lot of relatives in, her, in their church. And, and it's interesting, I'm talking to some of the relatives and they're actually moving them from other parts of the USA to come to their city to be part of that church because that church is so important in their lives. And they convince their relatives to literally stop their job, come here, join up with this church, and believe God for a job. Yeah, wow, is right. All right, you guys, start talking to your relatives, eh? Hey? <laughs> you guys got to have brothers and sisters. Come on. Do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me as in the day of the trial in the wilderness where your fathers tried, tried me by testing me and saw my works. This, you saw my works for 40 years. They saw his works, but they didn't know him. They saw his works, but they didn't know him. Therefore, I was hang, angry with this generation said they will always go astray in their heart. You know what's that? It's interesting that they, they went astray in their hearts. doesn't say they went astray in their heads. It was in their hearts that they went astray. And they did not know my ways. Another version says, they did not keep their minds on me. Another version says, they refused to learn about me. See, if I'm friends with Dennis and, and I become a friend of Dennis, I, I, got, I got to learn something about a, about a rifle. That's true. I, that, that's true. <laughs> I got to learn and I got to teach him. I got to teach him 
that when he goes hunting, he literally, I got to teach him Genesis 126, that he literally has dominion over those animals and that he can call them out into this place, this many yards away and this many horns on it and bam! True story, right? See, the word works. He said, I learned that I have dominion. I can call things into being as though they're, you know, like they're not there, but I'm calling them and I'm sitting here and there will be and a deer, it will go crossways. It will not be facing me. It will go and it will stop and And it did. See, he learned a principle. Keep your hearts tender. Refuse to the... Ah, as they swore in my wrath, where am I? They... shall not... They'll not enter and rest. You know, you ever thought about why things are not right at home? Why things are not maybe right at, at, at work or whatever or in your body? You're not at rest when you have things bugging you, right? This message is about God is not an option. That we need to have a crave after him. That we need to have a relationship with him in such a way that when he tells us to do something, that we simply obey him and do it. If we do not, and we say, ah, I, I like what Dr. Savell said. You know what? That, that's one of the things. Um, no, I'll, I'll get into it in a second here. One of the things Dr. Savell said, um, I forgot what it was now. Today the Lord said to me that some or maybe all of us here or those of you that are watching, we may need to recommit our lives to the Lord because we have allowed things in our hearts and they're not tender. That there's a hard heart. We all want to inherit amazing things in our lives, right? We all want the millions and billions. But let me tell you, this message today, I do not want to, I know, I know that there's coming a day and a time when I'm going to inherit billions of dollars. And I can write a million dollars to any one of you. It's coming. Mark my words, it's coming. I do not want to give it to you without giving you instructions. Because it will ruin you and it will destroy you. See, what is, our, what is your heart condition? What is my heart condition? Am I angry at somebody? Am I mad at somebody? Man, I, you know what? Julia, you ticked me off. <laughs> I am taking poison. And I'm eating poison. And I'm expecting her to die. But I'm taking the poison on. I, I, I've, I've done some counseling just lately. More counseling than I've ever done. And, and, I, and this one person, I says, holy smokes, you're taking like four tablespoons of arsenic every day. And you're getting killed and that other person doesn't even have a clue that it's that, that that this person won't even talk to them, and that person thinks, "Oh well, you know, like I don't know, I'm just going on with my life." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the, and the, and and I said, ends up, I just you know, like that's the Holy Ghost because he says, "Yeah, sir, um, you know what? Um, doctors diagnosed me with prostate cancer." I says, really? Hello, hello? You're so angry. I, I, I'm just going someplace. Are you sad? 
Man, I'm so sad. Do you have unforgiveness against someone? See, when you're sad, it'll lead to depression. Depression leads to oppression. Oppression is of the devil. See, no rest. No rest when we're walking in that. But he's provided the rest. He's provided how to get into the rest. But we think in our heads that we'll figure it out in our own way of how to fix this without including him. So God's an option. He's not my number one. I have options. I can just avoid Julia. See, that's an option, right? You guys are quiet. I'll pray for your toes later. I'm trying to teach you that we got to walk in love and forgiveness in order to inherit all he has for us. Amen? Because, man, you can be the bitterest person or the unforgiveness person, and, and you inherit a million dollars, and you're going... That's so and so, and then this so and so, and that so and so, and all it will do is intensify in your life, and it will literally destroy you. Did you know God often talks to children and teenagers more than to adults? Do you know why? Evan showed me tender heart. Tender heart to God. God touches him and he just melts. God touches us and we go, I'm tough. Nobody can hurt me. Okay. You know, the example I got is this is the second time God's trying to talk to a young person. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 6, and it says, The Lord said, called yet again to Samuel. Samuel arose and went to Eli and, here, and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he says, I didn't call you. He says, Go back to bed. Children, God's talking to children because they've got tender hearts. That's why God says, Come on to me as a child. They got tender hearts. They just simply want, you, you, you know, like I, I see it like with Titus. Just wants to pray for somebody and see them rise up from the dead. Like get off that, 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 get off that hospital bed. Are you okay now? Expecting. And I'm going, my, my, not that I have a hard heart, but we are so taught to have unbelief and doubt. And I'm thinking, Titus, what are you thinking? Dude, don't you see? Can't, look, at, look at the situation. No, 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 no. He's like, my God, just, you, aren't you, Papa, aren't you teaching me that when I pray? Uh-huh. Right? Eli was a great example of not teaching the young about God. He, he, he was a great example of not having passion for God. He was a great example of not having a heart wanting to obey. And he definitely was a great example of not showing the young ones how important God was in his life and in their life. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12 and 13 says, I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from the beginning to the end. I've warned them that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God. And he didn't discipline them. Discipline means there he didn't train them. He didn't show them the way. 1 Samuel 2.12 says, Now the sons of Eli were scoundrels. Who had no respect for God. How come they had no respect for God? Because as parents, we didn't teach them that. Then it goes on into, down into um, 1 Samuel 23 to 25. You can write that down. Um, see, the, what happened is Eli's sons started to grow up to the point 
that they wouldn't even listen to their father anymore because he was preaching one thing but doing something else, right? I remember I had a relative that, that would smoke and drink and, and, uh, and, and, I, and one of the, the oldest guy was a friend of mine and, and the, he'd be smoking and drinking and he'd say, if I ever catch you smoking and drinking, I'll whip your butt. <laughs> and I'm thinking, dude, you can talk all you want, but what you're showing us. I mean, at a young age, I knew that, right? Say one thing, but do something else, right? Eli went through the emotions. The sanctuary became a ritual. Whoa. Are Sunday mornings becoming a ritual to you? Not having a heart passionate, not having that passionate love for God, no matter what. I, I, let me tell you, you guys are here this morning. So the ones that aren't here, hello. How important is God in your life? Have your children ever caught you praying or reading your Bible? Just questions. See, God can become an option. And he became an option to Eli. Because he refused to teach his young sons to have a passion, to see the power of God, to, to see what God wanted to have happen in that sanctuary and amongst the people. When we have options, then God becomes an option in our life. We choose as an option not to teach our children. He taught, he chose the option not to uh, show them the power of God in his life or because he became so fat and lazy. I'm working at it. He chose as an option that Sundays aren't so important. I can go on and on, but I think you get the point, right? If God wasn't important in my life, then I would have an option. For an example, if Sunday morning something came up, and I said, ah, Pastor Sveti, you got to preach on Sunday because I got this other option to do. Somebody text messages me and says, hey, pastor, uh, can you meet me Sunday morning? It's the only, only time I've got to meet. And can you meet me on Sunday morning? Oh, Pastor Sveta, uh, can you preach on Sunday? Because I have an option. See, God isn't my number one passionate love in my life. Hello? Ah, pastor, I can always go next week. I can always go next Sunday. As the enemy sets things in emotions to make sure I begin a journey of loneliness, isolation, and depression. John 10.10 10 talks about the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you may have life and have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I had a relative and we haven't had a family reunion. I guess they did have a family reunion. I missed the last one. Uh, they had one last summer and I didn't go to it. But we used to have family reunions when my um, uh, granddad was a, uh, alive still. And we would go to these family reunions. And um, I want to let, let, show you something that's so important to, in my life. So we would go to these family reunions... And um, I actually had a relative that came up to me and they said, you know what, we ha I have been watching you and I want to thank you for your integrity and for showing me there's a difference to the life that you're living. And I thought, what? What are you talking about? They, th this this uh, relative of mine and his wife have been watching me. 
even though they were sitting around with the rest of them, and I even have Christians that drink, and, and, and I mean, they even tell dirty jokes. And because, because they want to be liked. They want to become like the world so that the world will accept them and the relatives would accept them. But I, I would go there and I would have a bottle of water. And if they started telling dirty jokes, I just got up and walked away. I didn't, I didn't participate. And it wasn't any big deal to me. But it was to them. And they were watching me. I ended up leading both of them to the Lord. But I want to show you one thing that you do not know out of all the family reunions, there's only one family reunion that I literally missed a Sunday morning. And the reason I missed that Sunday morning is they, lit, they asked me if I would share a message on Sunday morning with the relatives. I wanted to have church and asked if I would do it. I said, no problem. I, ba I laid out that salvation message. <laughs> but there was Sunday, there were, there were Saturdays, and, and we would have supper, and then Sveta and I would always get in the car, and we'd head back to Edmonton because I didn't want to miss what God had for this body, and I didn't want to miss the power of God in this body and what he had for you. I missed that one Sunday because I was asked for to preach. But see this? God is so important to me. Without God, I'm nothing. He is the most important thing to me in anything and everything of my life. I put a high demand on myself to be a part of what God wants done here and anywhere else in the world. If he can't move in this church, he'll choose a different church. Ah, come on, pastor. That's pretty hard preaching. Really? Acts chapter 5, two people walked into church and dropped dead. Acts, the New Testament. We're in the New Testament. Have you lied lately? You better be repenting. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to be raising anybody from the dead here. Whoa, what, what about revelations? Uh, Holy Spirit says, hey, church, I have a message for you. Because you've not been hot. You've not been cold. But you've been lukewarm. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Anyone that has an ear... Let them hear what the Spirit's saying. See, I love preaching good messages. I love telling you who you are in Christ. I love telling you there's billions and billions coming. But I also want you to have a life that he, you are so passionate after him that you obey him, you listen to him, and you simply say, yes, God, you're the most important thing in my life. Church on Sunday is the most important thing in my life. Wednesdays is the most important thing in my life. Well, pastor, you don't have Bible studies anymore. No, we have something even better. You can come to Bible school. And we have three sessions. So you can sit here and listen to one session. You can sit here and listen to two sessions. Or you can sit here and listen to all three sessions. And this coming... Wednesday is about new creation realities, who you are in Christ. Man, they, I am looking forward to those, those teachings. Come about 7.30. I should be done my test by then. See, the choice is mine. The relatives would come up to me and they'd say, Doug, why are you leaving? It's Saturday night. Why are you leaving? We still have pancake uh, breakfast in the morning and we have this on Sunday and we have that on Sunday. And I said, uh, uh, you know what? I got to be back. I got to go back. And I said, well, don't you have somebody else that can preach for you on Sunday? Yeah, I do. 
but he's my priority and he wants me here and I will be here no matter come hell or high water. I will be here because I have a passion for him. I love him with all my heart. Amen? Choice is mine. I can either obey him or disobey him. And you know, Saul did that. Samuel says, Saul, you just wait until I come back. And Saul and all the people are going, well, pastor, I don't see anything happening with the building. I don't know. Da, 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 da. I know the finances aren't going. Da, 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 da. And, and Saul says, okay, okay, just a second. I'm going to make it happen on my own power. Samuel comes back and says, what have you done? What have you done? It's better to obey than to sacrifice. It's okay, God. I got next Sunday. Choice is mine to obey or not to obey. You know, when I lived in Saskatchewan and, and I was a person that just went to church and I wasn't involved in any kind of ministry or anything like that, it was interesting. We lived 30 miles away. One way, 30 miles. We were there. I drugged the family. They were drugged. By the ear sometimes. You will. Right, Timothy? And they would they bring their, their coloring books or whatever. It's interesting. They would bring their stuff. And they'd be underneath the chairs. And they'd be coloring. And I'm thinking, God, they're not getting anything out of this. And uh, that's okay. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I, I, we had church service Sunday morning, Sunday night. We attended both, 30 miles away. We had to make a choice. We had to stay in town and occupy ourselves until the evening service. Hello? Or we could drive back and then drive back. Didn't matter. Then we had Wednesday night. But it's interesting, even though they were coloring under there, and I'm thinking they, ain't gonna, they, they haven't heard a thing. And all of, a, all of a sudden during one week, I'll, I'll be doing something, and Tim or Jeff would say, uh, Dad, remember what Pastor Sid said on Sunday? I said, what did he say on Sunday? He said, da 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 I'm thinking, oh, man. How? You, you weren't paying attention. But they heard. They heard the word. And because of the stand that I made and because of the passion, and I wouldn't miss anything because I knew that if I went there, God had a word for me. Every Sunday. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I knew God had a word for me. And because of my passion for him, because of my heart, my keeping my heart tender, even though church people hurt me, I kept my heart right. And I never allowed it to get hard because you know what? God cannot use someone with a hard heart. And so as I did that, now my children are on fire for God. My grandchildren... Leading people to Jesus. Hey, Papa. Hey, Papa. What about this one? Do you think we can lead them to the Lord? Hey, Papa. What do you think? They have more passion than I had. If I had taught, got taught that when I was a little kid, man, you'd have like, you'd be running to keep up to me now. What I'm saying is because of my commitment, my passion. That's where God has put me now today. Because of that. Where has he put you if you've got a passion after God? 2 Corinthians 4.8 in the Passion Bible says, Though we experience every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. At times we don't know what to do, but quitting is always an It's not an option. Well, if quitting is not an option... Then is God an option? No, he isn't. Is church an option? See, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here because you're here on Sundays. It's those that aren't here 
that I need to preach at. They need to hear this message. Because God is not an option in my life. I hope he's not an option in your life. I hope you're seeking him. You're, you're saying, God, I just want to do something. I want to do whatever you... What, see, what was Eli's habit? He chose God as one of his options. It's okay. I can just eat and get fatter and fatter and I'm okay. God hasn't done anything. Even though my kids are sinning, even though they're stealing out of the, out of the bank, even, they're, even though they're doing things with women. No, it's okay, it's okay. No, it isn't. We read, no, it wasn't. What about Jesus' habit? Well, we read that he was faithful. And we're to be faithful. What about Paul's habit? What about Paul's habit? In Philippians, it was written 30 years after he was in ministry. Philippians. 30 years later, he's in ministry. 30 years later, he's going, I press in to know him even better. Reaching to that prize of the high calling. I'm doing whatever. I want to know him even better than I've ever known him. Amen. See, that's passion. That's commitment. He's not an option. In Paul's life, it was not an option. He says, I will obey him. And I want to know him even greater, even in a better way. In Hebrews 10, 25, it says, This is not the time to pull away or neglect the meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing because we need each other. We need you. You need me. We need each other. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge one another onward as we anticipate the day drawing closer. Christ is coming soon. Jesus said that he was committed to serve. He was faithful. And he wanted and he did fulfill the call of God on his life. Then he turned around and says, now I commission you. Mark chapter 16. Now you go, therefore. Matthew chapter 28. You go, therefore. And you don't need to... You know what the, what the preaching of the gospel is? Last week, here's the preaching of the gospel. Here's the preaching of the gospel. Do you all, do you all know what, uh, let me see, let me pick a scripture. Do you all know what 1 John 4, 4 says? If you don't, I'll tell you in a second. But let me say this. Here's the greatest, the great, sorry, Wally, I am wandering too much. Here's the greatest the greatest, I know he's going like this. Here's the greatest word of God. Here's the greatest word of God. Last week, my whole jaw was aching and I prayed and God healed me. And I, don't, I have new teeth. What? Yeah, I have new teeth. Really? Yeah, look. Whoa. How, how did you get that? Oh, I prayed. You know, God is so faithful. I learned about him in church. What church you go to? Huh? I'm going through this. Let me tell you, God's got peace for you in the midst of the turmoil. Let me pray a peace on you. Bam. They go, wow. You know, I'm so peaceful. See, that's passion after God. That's what I desire in my life. Is that I would know him even better than I've ever known him during my entire life up to this point in time. What should be our heart's desire in serving him and fulfilling what he's called us to do? Are we equipping ourselves to do all that God's called us to do? 
In other words, are we in, in his word? Are we seeking his face? Are we coming to a place where we can learn more about him? We have everything. We have everything. God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, all live inside of us, right? Jesus even said, I, I asked the Father, he's going to give you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. He's your counselor. When you don't know which direction you should go, you count, ask the counselor. He's your, he's your helper. When you don't know what to do, ask the helper. When, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener. When you feel weak and you want to quit, he's the strengthener. He's the standby that you may... That he may remain with you forever. 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 Everybody say forever. forever. Did you know that when you get to heaven, he's still going to be bugging you? Because he's with you forever. Eternity. Amen. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, I bind up all anger. Unforgiveness, you need to go in the name of Jesus. I thank you, fear, I bind you up, you're a spirit. And I command you to go, and I thank you, Father God, for you've come and you've given us power and a disciplined mind. And Father God, I thank you for that. I give you praise, I give you glory for it. I thank you, Father God, as we get rid of unforgiveness, as we, as we restore relationships, as we work towards building new relationships, Father God, it says that we will enter into your rest. And so, Father God, I'm thanking you for your rest. That it's upon each and every person here. And I give you praise and I give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. We're going to ask the praise and worship people come up here for one second. If, if you have any kind of a wedge, like if, if there was a wedge between Art and me, I need to go see him today. I need to get it fixed. Amen? That, that's what Christians do, isn't it? Isn't it? They go fix things, right? Or are we like the world? Ah. Who needs that relationship? I'm going to go look for a new one. Really? How can you say you love God but don't love God? your brother, your sister. How can you say you love God? Hebrews chapter 11 in the Amplified says, let us therefore be zealous and exert ourselves, strive diligently to enter into that rest of God to know and experience it for ourselves. I want that rest that no one may fall or perish by the same kind of unbelief and disobedience into which those in the wilderness fell. See, this is written to the church. See, we're talking about those in the wilderness, disobedient. He was so mad at that generation because of their heart. Heart issue. I want to encourage you. The Lord said, the fastest way to get our hearts right with Him is to ask for forgiveness and then to turn around and praise Him for everything in your life. Every good thing in your life begin to praise him and if you read psalm psalm 137 in everything you start reading it i want to give you every 
in everything, I want to give you praise. And then he starts praising God for this. He starts praising God for that. What are you thankful for? What are you excited about that you need to go and praise him? So I'm going to have everybody stand up. And we're going to sing that song. Hallelujah song. Because we need to press in. Get our hearts tender to him. circumstance and you need prayer for something, I want you to come up here. If you need healing in your body, if you need, if you're, if you're going through, a, a, I don't know, whatever situation, and you're going, God, where are you? He's here. He's here with you. And if you need prayer this morning, I want you to come up here.
Jesus Christ, and that applies to everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. We will see you next Sunday. Hallelujah.